graduates, it's Stella from Mipul University and this is Stella short and sweet preview for Jiangnan Life of Gentry from Moidi's Game Design. Ah, the life of an artist is good, though sometimes it's also a little bit stressful. The job contracts, the assistants, they are helpful but could be demanding. Balance them all and create the greatest work of art in the Ming Dynasty era. The game plays one to four players with mechanics such as area majority, pool building, and worker placement. And no, you don't need drawing or painting skill to play this game. The game is of medium to heavy complexity. In Jiangnan Life of Gentry, Players are competing to get the most points by getting contract works, publish their portfolios with the help of their servants and assistants, also controlling points everyone scores. Each player starts with some action tiles in their bags from which they draw four randomly to start the game. On the player's turn, player selects an action depicted in one action tile placing their meeple on the right space under the action and also getting the bonus from the rightmost tile on their player board which the player then removes from the game. The player draws another two action tiles to add to their player board from left for the next turn then it goes to the next player until everyone uses all their three meeples. Some of the actions are just like the Head of art studios, players can obtain and fulfilling their painting contracts, getting resources to complete their contracts, hiring assistants to their studios for immediate resources and end of round bonuses, sending their servants to go traveling for resources, and work the rondel for various bonuses. The actions are usually pretty straightforward. See, still no painting. Now, he's the twist. Scoring is an intricate balance based on an area majority battle occurring on these boat tiles. At the end of the round, all players place servants on the boat tiles under where they place their meeples this round. Then the rightmost boat activates. The first six boats each have two objective tiles and the player with the most servants when it activates will pick which of the two tiles is added to the common scoreboard. Ties broken by whoever plays there first. After rounds 2, 4 and 6, all players will score those objectives with later rounds worth more points and earlier objectives scored multiple times. The boats are also replaced by new private boats, each with a single objective. These work differently in that whichever player has the majority of servants at the end of the game is the only one to score the objective. So, you see, it's not just a matter of doing actions efficiently. You need to influence the scoring to make sure your actions are the high scoring ones. And since the boats are always moving, you may need to time your actions carefully to win the critical area majority battles. After six rounds, game ends, player with the most points is clearly the best artist in Ming Dynasty, painting skills optional, and wins. So I did say one of the mechanics is pool building. After each round, you also draft new action tiles, starting from the player with the leftmost meeple on this row, and so on. These action tiles are layered get stronger throughout the game and they are added to your bag at the end of round 2 and 4. You see, like in some paintings, there are a few layers of strategy in the game. The actions are pretty simple, but the non-immediate results of the actions could reward or penalize you at the end. And the end of round objectives, they get more points as the game goes, making it highly competitive and also interactive between players. The game also has campaign option with more tiles, rules, and other components gradually introduced to the game. Work of art? So thanks for watching, folks. Check out Jiangnan Life of Gentry on Kickstarter. 
I'll put the link in the description below. The components featured in this video are prototype, so rules and artwork are not final. You would help us by like the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and comments below if you find this video useful. I also share my board games journey on Instagram, so hopefully I will see you there too. See you next time!